Percentages come up frequently in life. A raise at work or a bonus, student loans, taxes, the list goes on. Percentages also show up on the SAT pretty often. In this lesson, we'll work with percentages and use two strategies for solving percent problems. Let's go through a quick review of percents. Percent means per 100, or divided by 100. When we run into a phrase like 30%, we know that there are 30 for each 100. Percentages are also expressed as fractions. So 30% would be shown as 30 over 100. X percent would be X over 100. Don't forget, converting terms into fractions works with variables as well as exact numbers. Whenever we turn words into equations and see the word of, we know to multiply. Whenever we see the following words, we know those words are telling us to write an equal sign. Is, was, were, is equal to, is equivalent to, yields, and represents. Now that we've broken down the meaning of the terms, let's practice translating these terms into equations on a problem. What percent of 8 yields 2? We want to use a variable for the what percent, so let's start with p over 100. Since we need to know the percentage of 8, we'll multiply our fraction by 8. So, we have p over 100 multiplied by 8. And as we learned, yields means equal to. So if an unknown percentage of 8 yields 2, we'll write our equation as p over 100 times 8 equals 2. That wasn't too difficult. Let's try one more. 30% of x represents 60. 30% can be written as 30 over 100. Since we need 30% of x, we multiply this fraction by x to get 30 over 100 times x. And since represents means equal to, we can set the entire expression equal to 60. Now let's apply this knowledge to solving a percent problem similar to what you'll find on the SAT. If x is a positive number, what percentage of 5x is x? Our answer choices are a, 0.2%, b, 5%, c, 20%, and d, 25%. We'll start by underlining the facts. x, positive, and number. Next, we want to circle the key terms. What percentage of 5x and is x? Now, all we know of x is that it's a positive number. This means we can pick a number for x. 100 is usually a good number to use when working with percentages, so let's set x equal to 100. Doing the multiplication, we're left with what percent of 500 is 100? We need to turn this into an equation, turning what percent into p over 100, and turning of 500 into multiplication. And finally, is 100 becomes equals 100, to get p over 100 times 500 equals 100. Now we want to simplify by dividing both sides by 500. So we have p over 100 equals 100 over 500. We can further simplify the fraction on the right side by dropping the zeros, which gives us p over 100 equals 1 over 5. Let's cross multiply to get 5p equals 100. Divide both sides by 5, and we're left with p equals 20. Remember, p stands for percent. When we solve percent problems this way, the percent sign has already been taken into account. We don't need to divide by 100 again. So our answer is P equals 20%. Looking at our answer choices, C is 20%. That's our answer. Did you notice that answer choice A is 0.2%? That's a trick answer in case you mistakenly divided by 100 again. Watch out for those. There's one other strategy for solving percent problems. I'll go over it briefly, then we can revisit the same problem using this strategy. Instead of translating words into equations, we can use the equation p over 100 equals is over of. It might sound weird, but let me show you what I mean. Let's look at the same problem and solve it using p over 100 equals is over of. The answer choices are percentages. Let's use x equals 100 again. First. Write out our equation of p over 100 equals is over of. The p is still our unknown variable, and since the question states is x, and we picked 100 for x, we can plug 100 in for is in our equation. The question also states, what percentage of 5x? So of equals 5x. Plugging in for x, we get of equals 5 times 100, or of equals 500. We have p over 100 equals 100 over 500. We can now cross multiply to solve for p. p times 500 equals 100 times 100. After multiplying, 
we get 500p equals 10,000. To isolate our variable, we divide both sides by 500, which gives us p equals 20. Just like turning words into equations, when we solve for our variables, the percentage sign comes after the answer as it has already been accounted for. So p equals 20%. And as we know, answer choice C is the correct answer. Both strategies work equally well at getting to the right answer on percent problems. The general rule of thumb is to turn words into equations when you run into lengthy or wordy percent problems. So make sure you practice a few of the hundreds of problems available throughout this course.